Hi, welcome to the channel. In this episode, the fin is basically constructed. Uh, gussets done and all the taper bits after the prep work we did in the last episode. So, let's get on with the video. Okay, so there are one or two points. The video is a little bit shorter than normal because I lost a lot of the time-lapse footage. At the end, I have a glue test which doesn't quite go as I thought it would, but hey-ho. Okay then, so uh, all set up, I put an extra block in here which I'm going to use a tapered uh, stirring stick and another one just to help push this lightly against the leading edge. There's a method of just clamping. I'll use normal clamps everywhere else. All the blocks have been done. I added an extra piece of uh, laminating material so it's got a piece of top and bottom. It just makes it extra little bit of thickness for sacrificial stuff. Uh, it was just wide enough with the one but I prefer to have that for a bit extra. Minor issue there. So I've redrawn the centre lines. They're all marked up. I put letters on. The, the annoying factor, one might sort of say, is the two here are not at 90 degrees, so I had to make them individually. Uh, when you first look at it, you think it'd be a 90 degree joint, but it isn't. So we're all ready. I'm now, uh, I've got all the ribs cut uh, with their appropriate uh, tapers on, marked up with the centre lines. The leading edge here has been set up, so the centre lines on the ribs. Uh, match up with the centre line on there so that's at the correct height uh, and it's clamped to the block so it will stay where it is. Generally uh, relatively easy sort of setup at the moment so I'll get it glued. So a bit of time lapse. As you can see I like to weigh out my resin for the mixing. I feel that when I'm doing sort of larger quantities it's more accurate but many people just do it purely by equal volume for the T88. It's uh, horses for courses. You can see I'm just putting glue onto the block faces, the end grain, to let it soak in before I actually started clamping it. And I make sure everything's square. So all glued up at the moment uh, all the joints have been glued clamped you can see I've got a lot of clamps going on and you can see I've got uh, metal blocks around they're just holding the ribs flat against the table to make sure everything is absolutely square that way and a block and a square just to check everything's upright uh, this is only in very lightly that that was only in there just just to make sure that the joint was uh, closed up um, but not crushed up so keep everything sort of set up as it should be remember we want to keep a light pressure to keep glue in the joint not to squeeze it all out and the other type of clamp which I've got which is quite handy is this little fellow down here which uh, is for model aircraft uh, I've had it for model aircraft which you just sort of squeeze and uh, and lock in position and so you just sort of squeeze it and just push on that back pin and it locks it which is really handy for these sort of narrow joints where you want a light clamping force uh, i found the work quite well so far so uh, on now to i'm going to put in the gussets and you'll see time lapse on that as i put in the main gussets the one which i'm going to leave out for the time being is this one because it's going to require uh, some slightly different treatment to the norm because we're going to end up with a curved uh, gusset that's going around and an insect curved gusset at that so uh, a little bit more complexity and I'll deal with that on possibly the next video. Okay unfortunately the time lapse of the gussets was lost so you can see the prep it's really important I think on a fin and a rudder that uh, you have the gussets equal on each side because people can see both sides of the uh, fin and rudder and uh, you don't want that showing through they do show slightly through the covering but uh, you want to make it as nice as possible okay to round up uh, had a bit of a bit of an issue with the gusset here because of the 
extra material I put into the uh, cheek blocks here. Um, but I got round that uh, and the gussets have all worked out extremely well. I'll talk about this gusset um, in the next episode. So 19 hours total. Right, okay, a little experiment on uh, glue joints to see what happens and why I like to uh, sand, and remove uh, glue from the joints, excess glue from the joints uh, before I uh, glue them together. So I've got a piece of virgin wood here, so this will be glued to another piece of wood in the normal format, T88 on both sides and uh, clamped. I have a piece of wood here where the uh, T88 was applied and then wiped off uh, using denatured alcohol. I've got a piece of wood here where the resin was allowed to dry and then it's been sanded across with 80 grit. There's still a small amount of glue on the surface there but it's just about down to, to uh, basic wood. And then I've got a piece here which has got the glue applied uh, and the majority of it's all taken off but it's got a bit of a gloss on it because uh, that's the way it, it comes out finished. So all these will be bonded together and we'll see what happens when it comes to uh, trying to break them apart. Not very scientific but it's just an idea to uh, show my reasoning. Well the results not what I expected. Okay so let's test out and see which one's the uh, the strongest and uh, and weakest. So I think my the order should go uh, virgin wood then possibly the cleaned with alcohol sanded uh, where the, the uh, epoxy was sanded with 80 grit and then the uh, left unsanded so in theory I've trimmed these down so it's just got the ends there we'll stick it into the vise and what we're looking for really is the glue joint not failing, the wood at each end should fail first and then maybe the whole lot split and crack across the middle so we'll just see how it goes. So this is the one which is bonded as our normal wood would be, uh, resin on both sides, have all had resin applied on both sides before the joint was actually closed. So let's see what happens. Yeah that's broken by, by the joint there but not on the joint. So as we might have expected. So this is the one that's cleaned with alcohol. We'll see how this goes. Yep, it's done it's done the same thing. So the joint hasn't failed. It's quite a big joint, so in theory it shouldn't fail. This is the one that was cleaned with alcohol. So let's see what happens here. Yep. So, so far all three have failed the same way and this is the one that was left. So, quite unexpected as far as I'm concerned. I was expecting that one to possibly have split along the glue joint but it hasn't. You could try it against the stub there to see what happens. So, quite a shock really, uh, the T88 has, uh, has managed to keep a really good uh, joint going uh, despite, in a way, uh, poor preparation, unsanded, uh, yeah, and I, I've got to say that, that has surprised me quite, quite a lot. Uh, before we go any further, uh, let's, let's try out one of my test pieces. So these are the test pieces I use to check the batches of glue shown in an earlier video. So these these are this is one of my test pieces and this should break up either side it shouldn't break on the joint. So there we go. It it's failed but it's failed on the wood. It hasn't failed on the actual uh, joint. So that's a pass. That's what we're expecting to see. That is a past test piece. Okay and uh, hope that was of interest. 
definitely surprised me on on the case of these uh, I thought these ones would break like that uh, but I, I was anticipating a shear going where it's been left slightly glossy uh, but hey ho now we know thank you for watching if you enjoyed the video please hit the thumbs up you can subscribe or even hit the little bell notification for future videos any comments would be appreciated and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Remember, go fly and feel the sky.